So I have a three minute clip that I'm going to play. Now what this is, is a condensed version of Funimation's deposition. So at their Marquis lawyer came out and left, uh, Funimation's lawyer came in and talked to him for a little while. Not that long actually is the shortest one of all the depositions, but there were some interesting things that got said in it. So I took the whole thing and I cut it down to about three minutes. I think all of the key facts are there. We talk about the suspicions about conventions, who would come after Vic at Funny, and the biggest name that he dropped out of the whole thing, which is important to talk about, was, of course, Chris Sabat. So so let's go through this. I think this is the most critical stuff that we saw yesterday because there were some big bombshells dropped here, particularly about Chris Sabat, who has strong connections to Monica and Ron. We see a lot of pictures of them all hanging out being chummy, which I find very interesting. So let's go through this clip. I think this was the most important information that at least I saw because this was the big name dropping. If a particular convention terminated you before February 11th, 2019, you would have to agree that that, fun, fun, that particular convention did not terminate you because of Funimation's tweet. Fair? Not necessarily. Why do you say that? Well, if someone from Funimation privately contacted a convention and said, we're not going to sponsor your show if you have this guy, and then the convention contacts me and says, we're not having you. Now, I don't know that that happened, but I don't know that it didn't. So I, I, not necessarily. Well, assuming that didn't happen, and the only public statement by Funimation about its termination of you is this February 11th tweet, then Funimation's communication could not have caused the termination of a convention that, that occurred to you before February 11th, fair? No, I'm not going to assume that that didn't happen. I, I have heard rumblings from the convention community and organizers and, my, and Gary Hassan that <laughs> a sponsor, a large sponsor who was fostering relationship with uh, one of the large convention organizers uh, put enormous pressure on the conventions not to have me. So here's some interesting facts that we know for sure. During KameaCon, old Mr. Soy Soy contacted the owner and was pretty much saying, hey, we're going to pull out. I won't be able to buy things from you now or purchase that little spot we were talking about buying. Second, there was some interesting stuff, if you remember, about the Prince of All Sands tour. Remember, there was that whole Otakon 3000 tour that was going to happen where you would go and meet with Sabbath and you would go around and you would see the tour. You would tour the spot where Dragon Ball is recorded. That got canceled last minute. There was also the interesting implication of Toei pulling all the Japanese voice actors. Now, I don't know this for sure, but there's a lot of speculation that Funimation and Toei might have had some things to do there. Now, this is not confirmed. I can't confirm that. But the fact that Vic is talking about those rumblings, I think something's going to come out. We'll see. So it shouldn't be a shock that other conventions might have received some backdoor dealings like this. I wouldn't put it past Funimation, and you're going to see why soon. Uh, who at Funimation would even do that? You to look at some of the statements made by Monica Real and Jamie Markey and Ron Toy talking about F Funimation this and Funimation that and Funimation knows this and everybody at Funimation that and I, 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 I can only, uh, again, I can only assume, I think a reasonable person would assume there were entities at Funimation that did not like me for whatever reason and wanted me gone, did not want me to play the character Broly that I'd been playing for 15 years. Okay, so two things real quick. Before Broly even dropped here over the summer of 2018, there was a Cracker Jack box investigation done on Vic that was found inconclusive and he went about his business and still had his contracts. Now, before... The movie was even dubbed, and I'm talking about Super Saiyan or Dragon Ball Super Broly, was even dubbed in English. It was already, you know, released, and we already knew 
that there was going to be a new Japanese casting for Broly. And a lot of people pushed for the for them to use this as an excuse to recast the English Broly. They didn't go ahead with it. Maybe the powers that be decided, hey, maybe we can just use the momentum of this movie to get him. I don't know. But those are facts. They did try to recast him. People tried. I think you know who. Tried to recast Broly. And for whatever reason, Sony and Funimation nixed that idea and brought in Vic. Well, when I you think say it's been established there are people at Funimation that don't like me much and wanted me gone. Well, when you say that there are people at Funimation who don't like you much and wanted you gone, who are you referring to specifically? Chris Sabat. Is he Ooh. a Funimation oh, I would, employee? I, I would say he has a great deal of weight at Funimation. I mean, fun, yes, he is probably. Funimation um, outsources production to his studio. Uh, Chris Sabat has been involved with Funimation since Funimation was in the Frost Bank building in, you know, on 820 when I started working there. Um, so Chris Sabat, for one. So I don't care what anybody says. Sabat has massive influence at Funimation. And if you just Google Mr. Soye, Ye, you will find <laughs> several pictures of Moronica and Chris hanging out, having a good old time. I'm really surprised that Sabat isn't in this first round of suits. I guarantee you he will be in the second round. Um, who else? I would say other voice actors and directors. Voice actors like... John Schemmel. Monica Rial, Jamie Markey, uh, um, Michael, uh, J. Michael Tatum, um, by their own admission on the, on the Twitter storm, uh, uh, the other voice actors that have been employed by Funimation for many, many years. Mike McFarland, Colleen Clinkenbeard, um, um, uh, Damon Mills, Sean Schimmel. That's a big one, Sean Schimmel. I wish he had thrown in Chris Rhaegar as well. There's plenty of people there that have come out against him and shown that they are quite two-faced. Here's the thing about success and doing well. People get jealous, people get mad, people get envious, and I think there's a lot of that going on with Vic and them, and I also think his faith is a big factor as well. But Sean Schemmel, I know absolutely does not like Vic, and from what I understand, this has to do with Sean's dad being a big man of faith or something. Uh, I can't confirm that that's 100% true, but from what I've heard, he doesn't like Vic. There's a story in a previous video that I've done. I've done a few on Sean now, and there'll be more coming, I promise. But there was two things. In one of the videos I made, I made a comment about somebody talking about how they had Vic, how Vic had signed something. He went to Sean, and Sean had, you know, made an offhand comment about the signature. It's quite clear that he doesn't like Vic. He also did a video where he was saying some really nasty allegations about Vic. And little bowers. I'll uh, try to put that in the description or I will link it in the comments below and you can go check that out, but it's pretty bad. See, what, what Funimation may not get is that these voice actors have been employed by them for many years and when they speak, the public at large sees Funimation. To your knowledge, oh Monica God. is a voice actor who occasionally works on an hourly basis for Funimation. Fair? No, sir. She works a lot for many years and has directed at Funimation. I, I would Similar bet. to your relationship with Funimation that you talked about earlier. Sure. And that's pretty much it. Two things from that. Two things. One, when he talked about how Funimation you know, the branding of the voice actors and how they worked there for so long. That's absolutely true. And I've tried to make this case for other celebrities and the companies that they work for and their social media presences and how they treat fans a lot. Uh, they don't seem to understand that. They represent the company no matter if they are contractor or not. So the other thing about Bulma, 
being a big person over there, working all the time, constantly being employed. A lot of that has to do with Chris Sabat, who does a lot of the hiring decisions and the dubbing casting. The guy has massive influence there. And I think I really wish Chris had been a part of this first round, but his time is a coming for sure. He will be in the next round, absolutely, and I can't wait for that to happen because if anybody needs an up-and-comings, it's Chris Sabat on this. Chris Sabat is a very good performer at cons. He comes off as a nice guy, but in the shadows, I think we all realize what a snake he is, and all of these people are snakes. The one genuine good person is being thrown out of that dubbing industry, and it's kind of sad. It's kind of sad. Um, I really hope... He beats TCPA on funny. And I gotta say, though, it seems out of all of the all of the lawyers in this, the Funimation lawyer was the most direct and quick. Um Jamie's was a joke. Moronica's team, <laughs> their super team, they have three lawyers. Uh they're all terrible. Uh Soy Soy's deposition was horrendously bad. Uh, with his blinking and all those weird facial tics and stuff that he was doing. What a disaster. Uh, Monica's was okay. She didn't do that bad during her deposition, I gotta say. I gotta give her some credit. She dropped a couple of things, but for the most part, she came off as personable. Uh, Soy is gonna have a hard time in front of a juror because he just comes off as unlikable, ugly, and all kinds of just choice words that I can't say on this platform. Uh, Vic is comes off as a very handsome person, very personable, charismatic. Uh, these things are all going to go good in his favor. But this was a very interesting little segment drop because we had a lot of name dropping. I like that Sabbath's getting his name thrown out there because Sabbath Sabotage really, really deserves more spotlight. But unlike everybody else involved in this, he stays silent, which is surprising. Everybody else, even Schemmel, running around telling, you think I'm beta? So this clown car ain't stopping. And according to Lemoyne, it's got another 8 to 12 months before it's even resolved. So strap in, everybody. It's going to be a long clown show. Anyway, let me leave you with a little tidbit here as we leave about... um, Soy Soy, and how Vic knows him. Fun little Easter egg. Uh, anyway, make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit that notification bell, all that good stuff. And uh, share the video and throw a like up. That's apparently the only way the content gets out anymore. So uh, that's it. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace. So before we get started with this story, if you want to support the channel, check out my Teespring store. You'll find a link in the description. You'll find search such as this one, a Soye story. Is Ron Toy a, a voice actor? No, sir. What is he? What does he do for a living? I don't know. <laughs> does, he, does he have any business type of relationship with Funimation? I don't know. I don't even really know him. So do you ever go to Funimation? When you were working for Funimation, I take it you would occasionally go to their studios? Yes, sir. Do you ever see Ron there? Not to my recollection. Unless I passed him in the course of, you know, in the hallway. He's Monica's boyfriend. That's that's his connection here, as far as I know. Oh. Okay.